Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Utah Outcast, a, uh, a show that attempts, uh, attempts? attempts attempts to tackle reality with a little <laughs> bit of humor. Yeah, <laughs> it's a try. That's for sure. Yeah, that was just a fail right there. And since we don't, there is nothing you can do with audio once it's been recorded. Nothing. <laughs> You can't you guys, edit it. You guys have no idea how much I don't cut out of the show. <laughs> you can't edit audio. <laughs> yeah, this is episode number 399. And if you added together all the live streams and the patron shows, that's closer to 800. So. <laughs> all right, let's do this. An We've hour. We've been at this. And we're going to try to do an hour. Well, I'll try my best to keep to it. So we got to keep it as about as budget as we possibly can. Because can sometimes that. we go really long. And we're not doing that this week. Because I went, I went nearly two hours with the Amy's last episode that we had. And. Like, they got to the point where they're like, does this show ever end? <laughs> no. No. Yeah, we got it. We got to be you better. Keep, if you keep a quarter and keep putting quarters in the fucking machine, it's going to keep going, man. <laughs> the jukebox will keep playing. Anyway, I'm your ex. I'm your host, X. And joining me, <laughs> it's been two weeks. I haven't had a chance to think I'm of your it ex host. Yes. I don't know. 400's coming up, maybe. No, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm not I'm not quitting the show anytime soon. And joining me is Felicia. What else are so. you going to do with On you time? On Saturday nights, what am I going to do? Sit at home and watch television with the kids? That sounds fun. <laughs> it can be. It can be. Like They like reality shit now. No! And I hate reality shows. Me too. Ugh. I have some fun anecdotes about reality shows from the book Humankind, though. <laughs> so If you missed the, uh, the live stream this week, you have to go check that out on Patreon.com. Uh, slash Utah Outcast because we talked about a, a book that Felicia read called yeah. Humankind. Humankind by Rutger Bregman. So Very good. I want to go check that one out. He's the, he's the guy that pissed off Tucker Carlson by saying that he's a millionaire funded by billionaires yeah. and he's part of the problem. Yeah, so, he did. Uh, it was a good time. So uh, let's see. Find us on Twitch every Saturday. 8 p.m. Mountain Time is when we normally go. We started a little yeah. bit late today because I had to adjust stuff because I haven't been in here for two weeks. Eight-ish. Eight-ish. And find us at the, the, the new YouTube channel, uh, Utah Outcast Official. And I've uh, converted the old channel back to the archive. <laughs> okay. Started been releasing stuff out there because some people are like, hey, what happened to that Matt Powell video that you had out there? And I'm like, okay, I'll re-release it. No. <laughs> I'm your ex-husband, someone that Celia thought I was going to say before <laughs> I corrected him. <laughs> no. Uh, so anyway, Felicia, what's, what's been going on with you? You got anything that's been going on in the last couple weeks? Yeah, I had something terrible happen. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> We got a mouse. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. And um, we put out traps, mm -hmm. and that fucker just ate the cheese off. Mm. Mm -hmm. Try peanut butter? Uh, no, we don't have any peanut butter in the house, oh, so say, I'd have works. to go buy it. Oh, I love peanut butter. <laughs> I love peanut butter, but I never, like, choose to eat it. I don't know. Like, uh, I don't you, know what you it is. You get the jar, and you just look at it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I like peanut butter flavored things. I like, I don't know. I just never eat it. Uh, so we never right. get it. Uh, but like I don't, I do really like it. <laughs> I have peanuts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, mouse. Sorry. So the mouse uh, <laughs> has been a real pain in the ass. Wait, you have Orzo. <laughs> I know he's fired. Okay. To be fair, the mouse was sticking to one side of the kitchen where the cat cannot get to him. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, he's been trying though. Cat's been trying. He's failed though, so he's fired. Um. You're bad at your job, Orzo. Orzo. <laughs> You're a good cat. Whatever. Very good kitty. Very <laughs> loving, sweet kitty. Uh, bad mouser. <laughs> and I had a collie that was a good mouser. It was crazy because she would sit in front of the hole and wait. Wow. And, and then as soon as the mouth poke, poke its head out. <laughs> wow. Much better than my cat. I yeah. don't know why he's so bad at it. This house has uh, had a problem with mice forever. Like there's, It's kind of just inevitable that this happens. Um, but... Uh, I was doing the dishes and there was some water in the sink with like, I just, I can't remember if the water had sat in overnight or whatever. Mm. Um, but I went to drain it and it wasn't draining very well. So I went to push, we don't have a garbage disposal and like, right. so big stuff I scoop out, but like little stuff, yeah, yeah. I just push it down the drain. I don't care if it's bad for it. I don't want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got Drano shut up. Uh, so I went to push it down and I got a little bit of resistance. And with gloved hands, yeah, I pulled out what was blocking the drain. Oh shit! <laughs> I have an idea where this is going, but please, it was the dead mouse. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> bloated corpse mouse. <laughs> it was. Just, I didn't look at it that hard. <laughs> I'm so grateful I was wearing gloves. Um, and I went, ah! and I. Mm, 
like you do. Yeah, yeah. And I threw it back in the sink uh, where the water had drained out because the mouse wasn't blocking it anymore. <laughs> I pushed on it. It was great. It's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> and so Roger comes in. And he's like, well, you're the one with the gloves on. And I still couldn't pick it back up. So I had to use my tongs. And I washed my <laughs> my dishes. that Because they like there was dishes in that sink that were in my dishwasher. So they were right. just in there with a the dead mouse. So those got washed twice. He was like corpse dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and um man <laughs> oh man it was so awful and i scrubbed my sink with like you know the powder bleach mm -hmm. and hot water uh scrubbed it obviously <laughs> i was just the oh, oh my god it was so gross like i was like ill um but uh, the thing is the a little bit of water splashed in my mouth when i went nope. mouse when, mouth that, mouth when that. i threw the mouse and um um that night I I my stomach ended up bad, <laughs> <laughs> and I went into work late the next day. So that's what happened to me this week. And here's the thing: I didn't see any new signs of mouse after that's that. Good. Uh huh. Guess what I saw today? Mouse running on the cord mm -hmm. for the dishwasher, <laughs> like from the counter, because like the dishwasher. I'll have to I'll have to send you the plan for like making a a better mouse trap. Right. Where it's a five gallon bucket that you set up with like this thing where if they go get the food that's on it. Yeah, but then they it drown. Tips. Yeah, yeah, but it fucking works. You yeah, know? but I, I, that sounds so cruel. But then you fill up the bucket and you just psh, <laughs> out into the fucking yard but it's somewhere. it's cruel and I, my heart can't. <laughs> I felt bad about the traps that kill him quick. Okay. Like, and I won't use glue traps. Like I, that no, is. No, I absolutely won't I would, do glue I, traps. I no. will. No. Uh, so anyway, we're probably. We had, a, we had a rat problem in our backyard. Oh, rats. Be because we had a neighbor that had a dog that was in a kennel all its goddamn time. And so they just kept filling up the fucking bowl full of food. Cool. Cool. You know, good way to have a pet, family pet there, you assholes. Mm -hmm. Anybody that keeps their dog outside all the fucking time and you don't take care of that dog. That's a, you're you're a, a terrible of, person. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a rat problem. So I had to buy the rat traps, which are. The order of magnitude more fucking scary than a mouse trap is because they have to be because yeah. rats are fucking resilient. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had rats living in my backyard when I lived in Salt Lake. There was really nothing we could do about it. No, uh, in Salt Lake City. Okay, well that's where the rats live. So yeah, it's the fucking um, city. <laughs> uh, they didn't bother me none. Uh, but boy, I just wanted to reduce the number before like snakes started coming in because. Oh. My fucking family hates snakes. And I'm like, oh, they're so cute, though. I love snakes. I see them on my runs every once in a while. Mm. They're, like, sunning themselves on the path. And I'm like, hi, snake. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> I love snakes. They're phenomenal. Because they're not going to fucking attack you. They're just not <laughs> they're, interested. They're giant little pussies is what they are. They're just like. Even, like, the rattlers oh, no. and stuff. Like, Stay why do you away. think they're rattling? They're not rattling to challenge you to a fight. Hey. Like. <laughs> Come on, you want to go? You want to go? <laughs> That's not what it is. That's not what this is. Right. <laughs> They're telling you to fuck off. <laughs> Don't kill the rattlesnake. Just like poke a stick at it if you can't go backwards for whatever just reason. Stay the fuck away from. Just him, don't. Man. Just leave the rattlesnake alone. If you see a rattlesnake on your path, you pick another path. Exactly. <laughs> if you can't avoid it's it, it's occupied. If you, if you really can't avoid it, which are situations you really can, just like. Tap a stick near it, and it'll be like, "Fine, fuck." Fine, I'm out of here. Fuck, I didn't want this anyway. <laughs> yeah, like they're not. They're non-confrontational. They're not they looking want. to fight you. <laughs> no, they just don't want to move. That's the <laughs> and I can relate. I know. <laughs> I was I, here first. I would also feel pissed if somebody came into my house and was like, "Get out of here." I'm laying. <laughs> What? You get out of here. <laughs> I was here first. Fuck you. Exactly. Shh, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> so anyway, that was my that's what happened to me this week. <laughs> uh, so my past week I went to uh Anime Bonsai. Yeah, was, you uh, did. And I had a had a good old time, you, you know. You seemed like it. Well, because I, I would have gone to more panels, but like it's a small convention, so some of the panels are just kind of weird farting, <laughs> farting around farting around and the one that i wanted to go to i was like oh i love this series i would love to go sit on this panel and then i remembered who it was that was going to be running the panel for that day and i'm like no i've got history with that guy I don't, oh I don't no want <laughs> well okay so it's a dude that is 
prominent in the nerd scene in Salt Lake, but like we were rivals for different websites that we were writing. It's a fucking long, very. Oh my history. god, that is some deep lore drama. It, is, it really is fucking drama. And I honestly, <laughs> I honestly don't have any problem with the guy. I kind of want. The I tea. just, I just don't want to hang around. You yeah, know? but I kind of want the tea. <laughs> Let's just say that he had the ear of some people that thought that he managed to bend it to make me look like a villain. So oh. I was a pariah in the geek scene for a long time. And I'm like, Shannon, what the fuck are you talking about? I didn't do any name, of that. Name. You know? <laughs> ah, I feel like I know who you're talking about now. Yeah, that's Shannon, you know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I didn't want to go to that panel. For the, for the most part, it was just going to the uh, arcade. They had a big ass arcade room that they had set up oh, there at the convention, fun. which was nice. I got to show my kids how good I am at Dance Dance Revolution. Fuck yeah. <laughs> they were like, how are you doing this? And I'm like, practice. How am I doing this? I'm a fucking nerd. Get with <laughs> the program. <laughs> so they watched their dad doing that. And I'm like, fuck, I forgot how much I like this. So I've been looking to get the, the shit for home because I've got it on PC. Oh, how fun. I, I downloaded the software and I found about 4,000 songs that you can use. Oh, my God. Like, like they're just they're they're fucking ubiquitous on the internet. You can just find meme songs all over the fucking place. I found some Amazing. fucking lazy town ones. <laughs> Incredible. But no, that was a lot of fun. Uh going to the vendor hall was kind of fun. I got some like figurines, which I fucking I didn't realize I liked figurines until I bought some because I'm like, oh, they're so cute. There you go. And learn then, something new about yourself. And then uh my kids wanted to buy like bullshit. And I'm like, that's eh, your own money. I don't care. Buy whatever you want. <laughs> I want to buy this uh, this high chew candy, and I'm like, we can go get that at Ocean Mart for like two bucks, and they bought it there for like five, and I'm like, fine. Okay, you need to learn how to regret purchases later on in life. You know anyway, what? So. <laughs> if you never get scammed, you're not trusting people enough, in my opinion. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite thing was going to the uh, the artists hall because they had a giant fucking art hall where you can just go buy you know prints and stuff like from, from everybody so i got some prints from like uh like the one directly behind me over my shoulder here for this guy was back at the con so i bought all of his new shit oh, so yeah. i spent about 100 bucks at that guy's booth because i'm like nice. support your local not local but support your so, artists that you like yeah. you know it's they're not making a killing on this i promise <laughs> So I bought a lot of his stuff and then I just was going booth to booth, like picking up prints here and there. And I'm like, that's really fucking nice artwork. I'm going to buy that. You that's know, fun. That's so nice. I've, I've got like I got to buy like four hundred dollars worth of fucking frames now to, <laughs> to get all this stuff up. And I just I like art. I like yeah, art, I do, know? too. I get I mean, I obviously do. Right. 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 And so it, it was fun doing that. And my kids were buying like ear, like uh, earrings and stuff and. Oh. neat little things that they could get all these other places and they like they bought a couple of prints too so i mean it was just mainly just going and people watching we'd go we b- had cool. weekend passes so we'd go from like noon to two and i'm like okay let's go get some lunch and go back home because it was literally just up the road from us so this was at the davis conference center which was where me and my wife had our uh uh wedding uh party you know oh. our reception that's the word i'm looking for there so mm-hmm. it's funny because i'd be like hey in this ballroom where you guys are watching anime i was that's where me and my wife were like dancing and stuff. So. How funny. Yeah. That's, all right. Cool. It's kind of funny to have like a local tie into some buildings and stuff around here. So, I mean, it, it was kind of nice. But let me just tell you, the kids are all right, man. The kids are all fucking all right because they're the, the atmosphere for the whole con was so gay. Aww. <laughs> There were transes all over the place. There were a bunch of non-binaries all over the place. There were all these people just being their best fucking selves. There were people that were pulling off costumes I wouldn't even try to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you are a braver soul than I, because I couldn't even do that. That's and awesome. I, and I saw so many costumes where I wanted to comment on it, but it would have to reveal my power level to a lot of these people about when it comes to how much porn games I play <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> I've become a little bit of a hentai game connoisseur, you know. That's that tracks. You know? <laughs> it does, but it's it's fine because you know what? I'm a goddamn adult. <laughs> yeah, I have made porn. I, I will I make no, porn it, again in the future. I am just, not about to judge. No, and that's that's the funny thing about it is that like you tell people this stuff sometimes, and they're like, eh. and I'm like, fuck you, you judgmental asshole. They watch porn too, so like. like 
at least I'm open about it and telling you what ones to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are obvious money traps. Like, haha, we got your money, you know. So anyway, back to the, the Dance Dance Revolution thing, because people in our chat are talking about this. Uh, Anwin says, I want to see X doing DDR to an insane clown posse track. I will make it happen on a live stream one Let's of these days. So, Let's uh, do this. Let's do this. Outcast fundraiser X does Dance Dance Revolution to your musical choice, 50 bucks a dance. I. That's a bit much. I'd do it for a buck. I am. <laughs> A very good dancer, in my opinion. Not like not like professional level, but like for a hobbyist, pretty good. Right. Um, I am bad at dance dance revolution. <laughs> it is not the same thing. No, no, no. It's absolutely not. And all it is is just being able to hit things on beats. That's all it is. You know? I do, but the movements are not intuitive for me. I can dance no, on beats. It's a, it's a fucking cross shape. It's not it's even not more. intuitive for me at all. Like no, so I've been I've been looking for dance pads for it, and I have one from like my PlayStation days of having it because I yeah I modded my fucking original PlayStation to play these games <laughs> because that's me. I wanted to import the fucking ones from Japan, so I did, <laughs> and it's great. But like I've been looking for like now that I'm an adult with disposable money, <laughs> mm, yeah, I've been looking for like solid dance pads that you can buy, right? And the only game in town, the only one that makes decent ones that you can get that last a while, is in fucking Poland. Wow! <laughs> so I'm looking to import a couple of those, and it's not the price of the pads that that's that bad. It's like four hundred bucks. I'd pay that much for a peripheral for other things, you know. Mm -hmm. The the fucking shipping. Sucks balls. Yeah. Man. It is like two hundred dollars to ship something from Poland to Utah. <laughs> oh boy. That's yeah. Like half it's... the price of the thing to get the thing in imported. And I'm like, God, that's that, that's uh, that's drastically increasing your cost for sure. <laughs> so more more to come for that because I I, I absolutely adore that game. <laughs> that's cute. That's cute. I like it. So it was it was a good time. They have another one coming up like in April. I don't know if I'll go to it because it's in Sandy at the um Expo uh, Center. Expo Center. Mm -hmm. So which that, is, that's which is that's nice. my neck of the growing up woods. Yep. And I'd go there all the time for festival trees, but that's still a slog. You know, I'd maybe go for a day. I wouldn't do like a weekend. I, I would never go to the Festival of Trees because <laughs> that sounds exhausting. It is. I like trees and I like lights on trees. And I like Crafts. But I I like looking at the crafts that people made gingerbread houses and stuff. That's but great. They, you but know. you know what else is there is a terrible crowd movement. I know because I've been You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I like going to crowded spaces, even like rock shows and shit. But there is a there's a logic to moving around mm -hmm. in that crowd like conventions. They were blocking off the artist alley to only let a certain amount of people in. Well, it's not a great idea. It was a good idea oh, it because wasn't. it gave you time to actually go and look at the booths oh, and actually talk to people okay. instead of having to like crane and look over people's shoulders to see shit. Uh, no. So that was nice. That sounds but. nice. Yeah. The Festival of Trees. I've been to things like that in Utah before, and um, I know what that's going to be about, and I'm, I'm not in. I'm not in. I like trees, and I like lights on trees. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I'm banning somebody on Twitch. Right yeah, no now, kidding. So. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Uh, don't, we don't buy followers. No, I'm not. Gonna no, do that, go away. <laughs> so silly. That doesn't even. There's not even any evidence buying followers works. I don't know. Jordan Peterson got to learn. No, I'm just kidding. Did he? I don't think <laughs> I, I don't that... know. I just like to throw shade at that asshole as much God. as I can. <laughs> you don't have to make things up, though, because no, come on. No. The real stuff is Good very God. silly. What a piece of shit. <laughs> he very much is. He also does not seem okay. He's not smart. I don't care what anybody says. He's not smart. He has a way of making himself sound smart. I think he is, but I think he also um, thinks that makes him infallible somehow. Yeah, he's he's gone from you know reaching a level of being of a certain kind of intelligence and then stop learning at that point he uh because he's right mm -hmm. you know he also um seems to think he might be a prophet of god and that's not oh new. boy that's not new um <laughs> seems that he's been on this path for a while now um <laughs> thinking that he was preaching like godly truths <laughs> since his first like his maps of meaning 
Yeah, yeah, since then. God so it's man. been a minute he's been <laughs> on this. I think I might be a prophet of God. Um, the, when he was asked directly, he paused for an uncomfortably long time <laughs> and then said, no, I don't, I don't think I am. Maybe I am. <laughs> that was a pause, Jordan. That was way too much of a pause. So, so for me to go back to Anime Con next year, I'm hoping to... Uh, have a whole series of podcast essays to out for everybody. So I, uh, I, as I was talking about earlier this week, I started writing a script for a initial episode of, you know, let's talk about neon Genesis Evan Evangelion yeah. because there's so many people that want to get into it, but they're like, I don't understand what's going on. Right. I got your back. There I'll, you I'll go. go through That's it with you. So. I will sit down and actually do this at some point. I have because the more time with my partner. I can take some time. And do that because the and I have the brain thinky pill before now. before getting to even the first episode right now that I've been writing writing all this up I'm at almost five thousand words for here's what you need to know about terminology for this series Jesus. because they don't give you any of it yeah. <laughs> up front they're just like here's the show <clears throat> there you go watch it you know all right. so all right and I I think I I can talk about things at length for a good goodly amount of time so yeah i'm kind of fucking good at it you know i wouldn't be doing 400 episodes of this if it wasn't that I case don't think, i don't think you're very good at talking you for a suck, while man i don't think you can do that okay <laughs> no i totally haven't done that on my own <laughs> many times in the past uh no new patrons this week so we don't really have to worry about thanking anybody there but uh i do appreciate you guys if you like what we do to throw a buck our way you know it's a buck you know, you get a lot of extra stuff with it. So um, let's see. We do uh, have a topic that I mainly wanted to hit on. We got some news items if we don't, if we need to pad it for more time. But let me talk about this event I went to uh, for my for my old man. Mm -hmm. There was in, it was at the uh, city center in Syracuse. It was like the city council building kind of thing where okay. they they. So it was called the. Utah Cold War Victory Medal Pinning Ceremony, and it was done by the Utah Cold War Veterans Foundation. Wait, what? Cold War? Cold War. Yeah. Cold. There was no hot war. Who, how are you? I mean, there were still conflicts that happened. Okay. So let me, <laughs> let me just talk about this real quick. So I, I go to this event, and I'm sitting there. What? 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 what I... Mm. I just don't. Okay, if you were, if you were, if you were in an actual, like in a, in a conflict, right. you're a veteran of that conflict. But you, how are you? Yeah. So my my old man is a is a vet of the Desert Storm. Like he went, he served in that one. He That's was, considered Cold War. No, no, no. Like any time up until the '80s, when like the Soviet Union dissolved. Mm -hmm. But he was in the military for about nine years before the, the before the Soviet Union. Dissolved. So he, they're calling him a Cold War veteran just because he was that because because of that. Yeah. Okay. And. The, <laughs> We're going to get to that in a second, because this this group is just. I thought when my dad, my dad texted me, he's like, it's a cold war. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I, I would really like for if you guys could come to the ceremony that we're going to be having on this date. And I thought, well, cool. He's being recognized for something that he did while he was in service. I thought it was going to be like a. Department of Defense sanctioned kind of event It is not. It is not. Mm -hmm. So this event that I went to. Before I even got there. That explains why the name makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. And they use all this iconography. Like, if you guys want to see on camera, I'm going to hold it up for these guys. There are all the branches listed on there. The POW MIA that looks, thing. That looks like the template we used when I was doing, uh, when I was working <laughs> so, for the Yellow Ribbon program. And as you, you won't be able to see it if you're not watching this on video, but like the metal itself has in the middle of it, and it's not focusing on it. There's a literal fucking state of Utah, like, engram on this thing. And I'm like, that's not a real medal, Dad. <laughs> you know, this is not a... Did he pay th for this? This is not a thing that comes with, like, a service ribbon. You don't Did get, he pay? You don't get to put this on your fucking, like, your dress uniform if you were to wear this. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I think he did. I bet he did. So, I walked in, and it was supposed to start at 5. Obviously, they had to start earlier, so... Uh, just by serving, you're a veteran. Someone says that they're maybe not a combat veteran, but a that's veteran, not so. what I was saying. No, no, no. But like Cold War, you know, I guess. With, but that's but my with, point. It was not actually a theater. You that's know? my point. It's yeah. like, like if you're a veteran of Vietnam, a veteran of Desert Storm, that all makes sense. Even if you didn't combat, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying the Cold War <laughs> was not itself like 
a a thing. It was there was literally a cold war, not a hot right. war. So like that doesn't make any fucking sense. So it says here um the this whole ceremony going on says we will be honoring about 50 veterans to be held from this time to that time and I should have known reading the thing how long it was going to take cuz this is from 5 to 7 and I'm like first of all that's too long to have any audience do anything you know for two fucking hours it, at most you should have a tight hour <laughs> uh unless it's like a movie or a play or something or a podcast you know or a podcast <laughs> And it says the medals have been paid for by outstanding sponsors is what it says here. So, OK, so probably not a scam. No, uh, the Utah Cold War victory medals are already on hand. We don't want veterans buying their own medals ever. It says here we invite all veterans, their families and the public to attend. Let's make this a great day for these veterans and their families. Mm -hmm. And they played mm -hmm. Reveille at the beginning, which is, you know, the 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 bugle sounding in the morning thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Welcome remarks from the guy that ran the whole master of events kind of thing. There was an invocation, which I thankfully missed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> because I already had to hear the prayer at the very end of it. Ooh. So there's a prayer opening and a prayer closing oh for God. this thing. <laughs> this country is so silly. And there was a there was a color guard that came in. There's a color guard? And they did the ple everybody in attendance did the did the like pledge of allegiance and sang the national anthem. Oh, good, we get both like at a baseball so, game. I was standing out in the hall. All right, we don't pledge at the baseball game. I was standing out in the hall and I could hear them singing fucking the national anthem, and I'm like, mm. oh fuck, what okay. am I getting involved with here? So gonna avoid. Uh going in until that's over i'm like yeah exactly i stood out in the fucking hall and just mm -hmm. twiddled my thumbs for a couple of minutes while they're singing their song you know i get a beer at baseball games during the national anthem <laughs> because nobody's <laughs> i don't I'm surprisingly not... a lot more people are getting beers than you think they are <laughs> but also um i don't I'm, i don't I just care don't want to do the thing right so. i don't pledge allegiance to fucking anything I don't, anymore. right <laughs> And, and the like, national anthem was a fucking rip off of another song. It, well, the, all songs are rip offs of yeah. other songs at some point. Uh, but like uh, that, it's just dumb. <laughs> I uh, mostly my issue with the national anthem is one nationalism. I don't so, like states. If you didn't know the words already, they tell you what the national anthem is on this fucking handout. <laughs> what in the seventeen seventy six project wasting like taking up space? Is oh this? man, this was this was wild because like at the point where I'm sitting there just listening to them talk, I'm like, all right, I might as well list, see what's going on here. When the guy said, literally, I'm going to go to my notes here. Oh, we have notes. The Cold War never ended, is what he said. Okay. All right. He so. said that with Iran, nah. China, oh. and Russia, the Cold War never ended. What is Iran like? What is what? What? What is like? Why did you lump in Iran with this? I'm not dude? saying the state of <laughs> Iran is good or anything. No, but, but like, what does that have to do with the like the thing? This, this wasn't a fight against communism. Like the whole Cold that War was bullshit. Afghanistan. You know? That like Afghanistan involved a lot of that. <laughs> right. But like, so if you if you guys are out there and you're like, I, I support the troops and everything, that's fine. But you might get ruffled by some of the stuff we're going to say right now. Mm, so that is true. I mean, I'm not shitting on veterans for doing their job that they did. But the thing Sometimes is, like, I am. It depends on what it the is. The thing is, when you make your service to the country your fucking defining trait, that's when I have a problem with you. Yeah. Uh, get a fucking personality. <laughs> that's true, but that's that's kind of antithetical to being in the military. Is they 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 don't like you to have a personality. Yeah. That's kind of one thing they're trying to not <laughs> let you have. <laughs> true. Uh yeah. True. Yeah. That's so, so why do you think that's That's why whole, I didn't mix with the military cuz I that, <laughs> That's why it's their whole identity because that's the only one they get anymore. So uh but also uh, I just want to like say just for everyone who might be offended, fuck the military. Not necessarily fuck everyone who's ever been in it or whatever. No, but, but the, the idea of having military, a standing military, you the know, the military itself, it's a, it's a, the $760 billion a year boondoggle that we have that gets us absolutely fucking nothing except for dead people, dead people destroying the planet, colonialism, uh, like fucking, like that's, that's not even counting the black budget that they have for fucking yeah, toppling governments. Exactly. You know? <laughs> like they are, a, they are just an, a colonialist oppressive force that benefits the billionaires and they are 
the, like the worst greenhouse gas producer. Hey guys, tell me so... tell me the last country, the last country that attacked us. Mhm. Mm Japan? That's what I thought. Yeah, exactly. I I <laughs> I do think it was good to fight Nazis. I'm, right. Mm -hmm, I'm good with that one. And imperialist Japanese army and navy did a lot of bullshit. You know, I don't agree with the nukes. They did so. a the, yeah, not the fucking nukes, but like what they did in Manchuria. Absolutely. That was bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so, but, uh, but since then, <laughs> and I do think, oh, this is gonna make people so mad. So, when, so when the homie started talking about those other countries, I'm like, fuck it, my phone's coming out. I'm taking notes of this whole uh, thing. So, so, <laughs> so like, this is gonna make some people mad. But like, here's my thing. Here's my thing. If you have uh done military service or whatever um you i would like i think you should reflect on your participation in a very brutal system i understand that they coerce people in i understand that they use a ridiculous amount of propaganda and brainwashing yeah. um and i do think that that matters for culpability for people who get in the military i think that is a relevant point you know you know why um, my old man joined the military it was the only way out of Arkansas. See, like, that's a thing. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's well, like, uh, people, like, when Biden forgave some student debt, people are like, that's how we recruit people. It's like, oh, I see. Oh. You use, you use the. You're saying it out loud, are yeah, you? Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> oh, I, I see. We, we use poverty and the struggles of poverty therein to recruit people into the military to be bullet catchers and bullet throwers. That's great. <laughs> um, for, for capital. For bullet catchers and bullet throwers for capital, not for the protection of American freedoms or whatever, because that's not true. Uh, yeah. So um, but if you were in the military um, or are in the military, I think you should do some reflecting on your participation in that system. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I've worked with so many people where it's like they they build it up as the most virtuous and noble, best fucking thing. Noble thing that you've ever did you in your life. Do. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, the the MC guy kept on talking about stuff, and the the thing that really pissed me off is that it became ramblings of a seventy year old man. Is what oh it, boy! Most of the stuff that they were talking about, and I was getting like really Sheriff Clark's Sheriff Clarkson fucking vibes from people where he all the all the added on pinned on bullshit that they have on their chests and the patches that they wear and all this stuff. It's just like. You guys are fucking LARPing, you know? Oh my like... god, that's so true, though. <laughs> oh, wait till I get to the story of a guy talking about atrocities in Korea. When oh, like... no! Oh, no! Okay, let's get into it. Let's yeah, go. So... I'll stop I'll stop ranting, because we only got, like, <laughs> I don't know, 30 so. minutes. So anyway, the, um, the guy was talking about how they used to have to pay to be able to use, like, a, a public meeting space to do these events, and they would do them at, like, um, old folks' homes. Okay. But like the city has allowed them to do it for like the next five years, three times a year kind of thing. So they, they get free rental of this place because this is the thing they get to. Oh, somebody's, somebody says in chat. Well, why I generally disagree or generally agree with the anti military stance, DARPA has brought us the internet as well as GPS. Those projects were done so that our capability to continue killing people was as undiminished as possible. <laughs> uh I think that's not as clear cut as that. I mean, I, th I think I'm glad we found good ways of using that technology that was ultimately used first to kill people. <laughs> and, and also, and also, let's be real. Uh, most of most of that technology was actually developed in the public sector and yeah. not just under DARPA for killing people. Uh, but just in colleges. In know. colleges for if for curiosity sake, right. really. So um, so the but, guy was talking but, about. And, and um, it do I, as, as, I don't care if we got the Internet from DARPA. Fuck DARPA. <laughs> <laughs> so this this guy was talking about how Very much. if you if you guys need to, the bathrooms are free. You know, he was saying this in this meeting, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, they're not gonna charge us for the toilet paper. And I'm like, is this an old person Fox News reference to the price of toilet is this a, paper? Is this or a something? Thing? Yeah, is that that feels like a reference I'm not understanding? Oh, this was a Fox News crowd. Oh, for L sure. Like nobody's business, man. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> So uh, I noticed at the front of the tables, um, there was a lady that was there was a bunch of ladies representing the daughters of the American Revolution. And I meant to do a little bit more of a deep dive into who these people are. Is that the? But I had a lot of booze last night, so I didn't look into it. Okay. So, and also hour long podcast. We're going to try to keep this as short We're as possible. So short. Uh, and they, they reached out because one of the that things sounds like daughters of the Confederacy to my uh, ear. Yeah. So what they were going to have is they were going to have the mayor be a guest speaker at this. He didn't show didn't up. Show. 
I was like, God damn. It you has guys. been a mayor heavy <laughs> night tonight. Right. So, and the funny thing is to me is like, this isn't an actual metal. You know, it's not a recognized by anybody. None metal. of them are actual medals when you think <laughs> um, yeah, about when it. When you think about it, but you know, <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Th- it's, there's it's some fucking... weight. There's weight behind certain awards that you get, it's, right? It's it's what's his name? It's um, <laughs> Herschel Walker with his, <laughs> his fucking with toy his badge. Fucking this toy <laughs> badge, like this is real. It's real that it it exists. It's a my real dude. star that you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we understand that the prop exists. <laughs> That's that's it's real like that. It's real like that. Anwin says that the daughters of the revolution are women who can prove descent in America predates the U.S. Revolution. Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good to me. There was a guy that ultimately started talking about his lineage. He started talking about his lineage in front of these people about how many generations back served the military and uh-huh. how many people fought in this war and that war. And I'm like, bro, get a fucking hobby. You know, like uh, apparently they don't rec- acknowledge any descendants from slaves. Oh, that's good. I knew it. I knew, I knew it was going to get there. It was going to be good. <laughs> so no local government showed up to this. Uh, let's see. They're, and they, they wanted to start. They were talking about how they were going to do a presentation of no. the folding of the U.S. flag. That's why you sent that. I was like, I don't care about this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it was odd because I'm like, wait a minute. Is this real? Is this legit? Is this like. Because there are 13 folds in folding the American flag that they do. Mm-hmm. And I would just want to go over a couple of them because, like. They are. They all have bullshit reasons. And it's, I mean, it's all made up. We all know this is all made up. But they said in this meeting that these were questions that they would be asked to answer in order to get new rank sometimes. That's, like, like on a test, they would get a question saying, I'm what, is, what does the ninth fold of the flag mean? That sounds real to me. Um, and I, 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 that my, I saw familiar. enough old people nodding along where I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is real, you know? And I went to go find out and I'm like, is there a Department of Defense re- re- resource about this? I couldn't find one. But military.com, which is about the second most place that you can go to for mm-hmm. this whole thing, mm-hmm. talks about this. And so, like, I'm just going to run through a couple of these folds right here. Number one, the first fold of our flag is the symbol of life. What does that even mean? That's this is a lengthwise fold too. So, but, so what is a fold in life? What how does that, what how does that <laughs> representation work? From, make it make sense. It's like the it's like the fold. soup. It's like the soup throwers at the Van Gogh. It's like I get the I get what you're doing here, but the target that you use is also a symbol, and the poor guy. Who the died, man that never profited from his that, work. Yeah, he know? never made like any money from his work. <laughs> right. And spent time in like a, a, a psychiatric prison. For cutting his ear off. <laughs> uh no, that was he he went there because his son died. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, he went he had a psychotic break because his son died. And so he got to go to prison about it, you know. Um and You know, back he, when prison could be rehabilitory instead of <laughs> No, it was no, so much worse. No, no. It was so much. I mean, uh, we're okay. It was really. But yeah, bad. Miss, missing the mark about what the fuck does this mean? Yeah, you it know? was. It was torturing him t- out of his mental illness. Apparently, <laughs> it worked. Kind of. I mean, he got better. It, he his psychosis ended. That's normal for psychosis, though. It does usually usually end. get better. So, um. The, anyway, uh, like like the symbol you pick matters, and right. like Van Gogh, bad symbol for climate change, in my opinion. <laughs> why not go for the pop art guy? The, you know, with the suit. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. This what is the fold? What is folding? How <laughs> wh- how does that connect to life? At it's all? just somebody made a notice that you fold it X amount of times, and they're like, "We should put symbol." We should we it. should say it means something. Yeah, the second fold is the symbol of our belief in eternal life, and I'm like, "Excuse me, excuse." Uh, there are service order. members that are atheists. Point of order. <laughs> not everyone believes that. Hell, not everyone who has a religion believes there's eternal life. So right. So let's see. The uh, the fourth fold, and we're going to skip over ones that we don't need to go through here, represents our weaker nature as American citizens ah, ah, trusting in God. That's 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 what humankind by Rucker Bregman's about is that this is this is a belief that's been around for a while now. Yeah. that has been propagated from those in power <laughs> to make us believe that without their social order, that we are just baser like beasts that have this nature yep. that are lesser nature. And we have to have these this this order from the authorities to keep our evil and nature so at bay. With, with this being something people are tested on within the military, that means it's beat into them. So this is something that they have to make part of their daily life or at least monthly life to understand what all this shit is so that they can respond with it whenever someone asks them about it. 
and it's it's insidious that this kind of shit goes on so uh let's see don't want to do the uh the fifth fold sixth fold is where our hearts lie what that doesn't make sense oh my god this is so dumb it is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag. <laughs> and it doesn't just say, stop there. It lists the fucking pledge of <laughs> on this thing. I'm like, gross, dude. The seventh fold is never a- heard of it. What 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 is-, is this thing that I was forced to do every day? <laughs> what you know? is, what does it say in this pledge of allegiance? I have never heard of this thing. <laughs> and also, who is Jesus? Like, fuck me. I know what's in the pledge of allegiance. And I know who Jesus is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you get to the eighth fold. This one's all wild. right is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death that we might see the light of day and to honor our mother <laughs> for whom it flies on Mother's Day. What the fuck? <laughs> we got the, you almost died and you came back, but also mom. But moms. <laughs> what the, in the fuck is that? Hang on. The mom ne- wasn't important enough to get her own fucking fold. <laughs> she only birthed you. Number nine, the ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood. Why? <laughs> what is this? What is happening right now? I I am going insane. It's what? It's a tribute to womanhood. How does that make any sense? It has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that has molded the character of the men and women who have okay. made this country great. <laughs> okay. They're saying oh. this in front of the crowd, and I'm like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? That is some patriarchal you get, bullshit. You get all these old people that are like, uh huh, uh-uh. yeah. They go through each and every one. Oh my god, they went through taken, all of these. This took so fucking long, forever. and they folded it in front of us too. Uh, <laughs> I was in hell <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> the tenth fold no! is a tribute to the father. Who has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country. No! Oh, my God! <laughs> Since he or she was first born. This is, this. This is bad. Oh, no, hang on. Here's, here's 11. The 11th fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David. What? And King Solomon. And glorifies the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or as I wrote it, uh, Hebrew. Ooh. This this honors Hebrew citizens is what the guy said in front of the class, the group of people. But why just the lower <laughs> half of the seal of David or whatever? I don't know. Number twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's going on with that upper half. <laughs> <laughs> the twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh my God! <laughs> In the Holy Trinity. Number 13th and last fold is when it, the flag is completely folded. The stars are uppermost, reminding us of our national motto. E pluribus. No, not that one. That's the cool one. No. In God, God we, we trust. trust. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? Go- what is going on here, man? And so... I, I mean, even in my notes, I wrote, good Lord. <laughs> this, this sucks. I and don't... I said, 100%, these folks are all conservatives. This is awful. Oh, oh, man. And they traded out the guy that was talking for, like, another dude that that was in in the microphone. Oh, like, cool. Mm-hmm. And every plosive that he had popped Mm-mm. and hurt everybody's ears. You could hear, mm-hmm. I could hear hearing aids bleeping <laughs> because mm-hmm. they were so fucking loud. <laughs> okay. And here's a couple of words that he said. Tradition. Excellent. I like it. I have a I have a couple of those. Let me see Tur-dition. where Tradition. Tradition. That's what that folding the flag is. Oh, it's man. a ishin. <laughs> I wrote down all the people that didn't show up. There was so many. That is I said this is a bunch of no ass cotton hill looking motherfuckers. That is extremely <laughs> funny though that uh because they're like we're going to do this again in like what 3 months they said or something like that. <laughs> um and like you guys if you want if you want public officials to show up you need once a year. You do this once a, once year. a year. He said sacrificed. Sacrificed? Fuck yeah. <laughs> he said veteran. Veteran? <laughs> sacrificed. <was> That's <laughs> Uh, <laughs> ah, I was gonna make a dumb sub joke. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> they have tears in their eyes, tears like tears, Tear. oh. tears. Not like not, and not. The, I'm doing bad pronunciation of it, but tears, tears, tears. As they say, the, I'm like, good God, this guy is so Utah. <laughs> Y'all need to get yourself a shadow box for your medal. Is one thing that he said. I'm like, 
Oh my god, I've been you're killing me. You fuckers are killing me. But tradition was the best thing. Tradition. They had these ladies there that were called the Battle and Bettys. Oh boy. Utah Platoon of the Battle and Bettys. And I'm looking at that on the thing here. They were pinups. Ladies dressed like pinups. You know, pin Old up ladies? models. Mm, 40s, 30s. You know, not not really any young crowd doing this whole thing. So there's just a guy, uh, some ladies that were, I mean, fine. I mean, I'm you, into you, it. You looked good and your hair was nice, you know? I, you know? I like, I'm just. But it's just weird that, like, you're all these guys. So what did they do? Did they do anything? They were handing out waters and programs to people. You know, they were just helping out pretty much. Oh. And that's fine. But, like, the guys on stage were like, I remember we used to fly flags of you ladies underneath the American flags. And I'm like. What? You're creepy old horny, dude. Why? Stop it. Don't make it weird. Don't be weird. Uh, He's like, uh, they'll bring you some water. They ain't going to bring you any booze. And I'm like, well, if you brought booze, this would be a lot more fucking fun. Yeah. Do booze <laughs> next time. There was lots of talk about hip replacements and how they had mm -hmm. to stand at attention and their hip hurts when they do this. Oh, like, I, I like think you that's guys. kind of cute. <laughs> uh, let's see. He, he, talks, he talked a lot about how we lost a lot of people. Um, during the Cold War that were, you know, pilots going over airspace, mm. you know, and I'm like, hey, that airspace wouldn't happen to belong to a country, would it? <laughs> and you were you were what you were going over, over that airspace that you shouldn't have been in. Sounds interesting. It sounds like you fucked around and then you found yeah. out. And this is what I mean. And like, I'm sorry you died, but maybe <clears throat> the military's bad. <laughs> But like they were talking, maybe they shouldn't send young people to do this stuff. So they they also had a symbolic table ceremony, is what they call what it. What is that? It's an empty table that has all of this other symbolic bullshit on it that they went through great pains of telling us what every single thing on the table meant, and they made sure to point out a local restaurant that had one at, at all times, so they can get all the retirees to eat there which is why i don't go to this fucking breakfast place anymore because i'm like this is a fox news diner that's what this is <laughs> but is the food good not 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 especially Dang. You know? okay well yeah it's not it's not your typical greasy spoon you i'm know? gonna say like it, i would if i'll it, put up with a lot of shit with some for some yeah i'll good put up, with, I'll put up gravy, with a stupid you know? symbol table if yeah. you got good yeah <laughs> biscuits and gravy uh, let's see. <laughs> He's like, would y'all stand for a brief moment of silence? No! Oh my god! So we had to stand for the brief moment of silence for the POW MIA people. Oh my god. And how when he said brief, motherfucker took like three seconds. So you got all these old people no! that struggled to get up. <laughs> and all bowing our heads and pretending to be serious. Okay, you can be seated again. <laughs> I was like, why Dude. do you have to stand for a moment of silence? Why can't they sit for a moment of silence? In fact, I would say sitting, remaining seated is much quieter. Yeah, there was a white tablecloth on the table that talks about the purity of the call to arms. No, that doesn't sound good to me. That doesn't sound good. It's a table set for one, and it says there's a single red rose in a vase, you know, for the passion of something. I don't, oh I didn't God. write that one down. But like, I looked and I'm like, that's not a rose. That's a. That's like a marigold. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Like you don't know your carnation. Fucking flowers. It's like a fucking carnation. A carnation. <laughs> it's a fucking carnation. Roses aren't that expensive. No, um, they're not. They're not that fucking great, guys. You know they're you pretty. Get, they smell good, but yep. <laughs> you can get a rose for like two two dollars fifty cents. Yeah, for a long stem. Yeah. You know? Uh, let's see. Red ribbon on the vase for determination is what they say. Oh my god! You know what though? You know what though? They're I actually okay. I don't mind. <laughs> ceremonies as like an existing thing i think some ceremonies are actually really nice um <laughs> like weddings i don't like marriage as an institution but i think that like commitment to somebody it deserves like you know like that's cool and a little bit of celebration you know yeah celebration's nice and yeah. like you know relationships are really important i think but and you so, don't have a fucking wake <laughs> at your at your wedding <laughs> that's true um and i think that like goodbye to my singlehood <laughs> i think like uh doing like i went to protests where they read names yeah. of of people who had been killed by police and that right. is a ceremony right 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 that was really meaningful but the more you stack ceremonies that are less and less connected to anything resembling <laughs> something in reality, uh, and you stack those on top of each other, the less they mean anything. Yeah, this is just and bullshit this, mountain. This right is here. what we call pomp and circumstance, <clears throat> and uh, I don't like that. There's a there's a plate that they there's have a plate. Thing. Why is there so but, many? But there's stuff on the plate. The plate's not the symbolic thing. The plate doesn't really mean anything. But there's a slice of lemon. 
for the taste of bitterness of loss. But lemon's not bitter, it's sour. It's sour. <laughs> There's a pinch of salt on the plate to represent the tears of the lost. Okay, <laughs> so somebody somebody went to like the fucking high holy days once. <laughs> oh, my mom, she goes to Passover now. <laughs> so it's like, what? Passover. The yeah. tears in Passover. Uh, yeah. Let's see. A lighted candle for the light of hope for them to come home. A, uh, inverted... They're dead. I thought they were dead. No, they're just either missing in action oh. or, or dead. So uh, you have an inverted wine glass because they can't toast with us. And I'm like, that's just an upturned wine glass. It's not an inverted wine glass. Inverted wine glass speaks to me of fourth dimensional physics. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> Nope, not gonna be that guy. Nope. Don't do it. Nope. You know what you know what you know what they meant. I know what they meant. So, <laughs> there's an empty chair because they are unreturned or no longer with us. Oh, Remember this is dumb. This doesn't and even every time he would say what the thing represents, he's like, Remember. Like it's being drilled into you. Remember. It's all Remember. love. No. No, just stop saying that word, dude. You're 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 dragging this on. Shut the fuck up. It's all love. <sighs> so <laughs> So they talk about how that's in every most every VFW has one set up, you know, those those clubs for uh, veterans uh, and the cafe. They would talk. OK, about but like, it, why so. not just have some names, like read some names, maybe some people from Utah who are. So this is this is almost an hour into this thing by now oh, okay. because of all this other bullshit going on. Uh, they had plaques to give out to the city officials that from the city council that might have been there. Uh, one guy showed up and he was late. And he showed up wearing soccer gear because Excellent. his kids had soccer stuff. And I'm like, but I would have been fine. I would have been fine if he's just like, okay, yeah, thanks for the plaque. But he started crying and saying that I, I never got to meet my grandpa because he died in a useless war. You know, he didn't say useless war. That's just me vamping here. But like, he never got to meet his grandpa because he died in Vietnam. And I'm like, a place where we didn't need to be. Hey, how about that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like a real bad thing that we did. So. So. um. Let's why don't see. we why don't they ever talk about that like they're all they're all so sad that all these people are gone and yet like they don't ever talk about why they are gone there because these guys 100 percent thought that they were fighting a war to stop communism and that's good that's a virtue to them mm -hmm. well they failed yeah they and failed also, spectacularly and also not only from then but like from stalin's russia to mouse china all the way to vietnam Laos, you know, Cambodia, all these places the where fascists they installed in Africa, the Middle East, and in South America. It's a noble fight. Oh, yeah. They started talking about some of that, too. Oh, so boy! I was fucking dying <laughs> watching this whole thing because I'm like, oh, my God, I know what they're talking about. And Democratically you're... elected <laughs> socialist like plans and they fucking killed people and they got them sent to death camps. So they're like, come up to the front after we're all done. We've got a piece of barbed wire from the 38th parallel in Korea. Uh, we've also got a piece of the Berlin Wall and we've got a magazine here with a picture of Khrushchev on it. And I'm like. <laughs> You know, you could just pick up any piece of concrete and say that it is part of the Berlin Wall, and you can get literally any piece of barbed wire and say that that's part of the 38th parallel. Why would I care? I don't. That's the thing. I don't fucking care at all. And he said that there's some propaganda. Excellent. <laughs> about the, the ship that was captured by North Korea. I wanted to look into the USS Pueblo because apparently it crossed the boundary where it didn't need to be in North Korea, mm. and they captured the ship and the crew, and they're like, they treated them worse. And as what is it? treated as bad, if not worse, than the POWs in Vietnam is what he said. Hey, how did we treat mm. people? He said, uh, hey, op hey, Operation hey, Paul hey. Bunyan, they talked about because it was about removing a tree that was blocking view on the 38th parallel because they couldn't see around it or behind it. And <sighs> they ended up losing people because of that. I'm like, that's fucking this stupid, sounds man. Stupid. This sounds really stupid. This sounds like a <laughs> stupid reason to die. Go cut down that tree that's in a DMZ. No, fuck you. <laughs> that sounds... You want me to die to cut down a tree? Okay, great. No, I'm not going to do that. So That sounds like a stupid reason to die. <laughs> and so, it, it for me, it felt like a lot of these guys were just sad that they never had, like, a major theater to be a part of oh, and all this whole right. thing. So it's like, we're just going to go all the Cold War. Right. All of it. <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds like. That's why I was like, what the fuck are you talking Cold War awards? That doesn't and make any sense. He said, we helped a lot of countries to stay away from communism, is what he said. Helped a lot and of I'm countries like, to I'm stay. I'm like, South America would like to talk to you here, buddy. Helped 
a lot of countries. Cuba would like to. Cuba has entered chat. You know, <laughs> to stay away from communist helps. Okay, you know, yeah. I'm like, you're you're telling me then. You're telling me de facto by you saying all this shit that you went to war with the people of those countries. With the people of those countries for capitalism to to keep them from enacting their own will. Yeah, their own national interests, you know? And I mean, like, let's be real. Like, a lot of places in South America, those were through democratic elections yeah. that they, <laughs> that like socialism happened. These were through popular movements. And when I say popular, I mean more than 50%. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, they, these were people enacting their own will, and we helped them not do that. Let me tell you about industry in Mexico. <laughs> As that sounds cool. <laughs> that sounds cool and good. So it's funny. Right when they started doing the, they were going to start handing out medals. My old man had to get up to take a piss. <laughs> I, was just, I was laughing because I'm like, fuck, what is he going to do if they call his name? I'm like, hopefully he's not gone that long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought they were going to just like list the names. And just have them all line up and do like the thing mm -hmm. where they get their metal picture, you know, whatever the fuck they're going to do. No, individually, they called them. They got applauded. They had to walk over, get their metal pinned on and have their bullshit handshakes and salutes that they had over there. And then they go over to this other area to get another thing pinned onto them and a certificate. Oh, man, the certificate they got gave them said that. Now, I want you guys to know that these certificates are copyrighted, so don't go and make copies of them. That's okay. Um, I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> like, you're going to make a copy of the certificate that has his name on it? <laughs> right. And also, um, if you make any art, you will have the copyright on it automatically. Right. And, but they also said, we're also going to, they gave it to them in these shitty mean, little five cent page protectors. You, it doesn't mean you can't make a copy of something. No. That's not what copyright, that's not what means. copyright means. It means you can't profit from it. Yeah. What do you mean make <laughs> copies of it? And then they like said, also, we're going to include a pamphlet. So if you have any of your other veteran friends, you might want to give this information to them. So they're essentially multi-level marketing at that point, you know, mm -hmm. which is what this felt like. There to it is. Me. OK, that's <laughs> so. that explains it. That's why they're not having them pay for the medals. They're selling something on the other end. There, right. there it is. I knew it because nothing like this exists without profit, especially not here in Utah. And so uh, -uh. uh let's see at least not an attempt for profit. so many folks that they called up in front of the crowd only had like two or three year tours in the military excellent and they've made their their veteran culture the whole thing of their life mm. when it was like just a brief moment oh, of their I life love you know? it. i love it this is great there was a 44 year old like air force retiree guy that walked in front of the crowd and me being the, the military nerd that i was i'm like that guy spent 44 years in and he retired as a master sergeant he fucked up in a lot of places if he got if he went that long. <laughs> That's a long ass career, man. Retire. And to retire as mid level management, you know. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. There was a whole bunch of people that missed out. There was a shitload of people that missed out. Out of the fifty or so they said they were going to be there, probably twenty showed up to this whole thing. And I wrote down all the misses. I'm like, oh come on, Marine Corps, you guys can't have anybody come show on! up. Come <laughs> on. Uh, so. It's not like an official pin and they're putting it on their uniforms and like saluting like all these bad old men salutes that they're doing. I'm like, it's all performative. I was like, I was dying it inside. Sounds, it was so it terrible. Truly awful. <sighs> there was a bunch of married couple veteran groups that came up to the front. Some of them wearing American flag T-shirts and Excellent. like mm -hmm. fuck Joe Biden stuff Expect on them. Expect nothing less. <laughs> Oh uh, no, they didn't say fuck Joe Biden. These people the said FJB. let's go Brown. Let's oh, go Brandon, you they, know. Yeah, they had let's go Brandon. And so Cuz like, they don't say the f word. They do say faggot. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry so, everyone. I I we are part of that. That's I I don't <laughs> use that word as a slur. But. About about the only officer they called up to the group, he didn't come. <laughs> These are, all like, these are all like enlisted guys that they're reading out. So, yeah, no, no shit he um, didn't. Let's see. I, I said, finally, a Marine shows up. <laughs> and the one guy cr made a joke to the crowd. He's like, some of y'all still look pretty good. Because <laughs> a bunch of old fucks in this crowd. Uh, it's a scam. And they started talking about never piss off the cook in the military. They went off on this tangent about eating rations and shit and the stuff you had to eat in theater. And I'm like, okay. most people stayed in the air force like in the rear echelon and they got actual real food right you know? uh miss miss i said this is so i'm fucking getting that slow. i'm getting vibes of that story from like the 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 taking over the 
National Wildlife thing. The and, Malheur thing. Yeah, and, <laughs> and all those fucking guys were bragging about their military experience and they had none. I'm yeah. getting real vibes about that. Like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there's let there, me tell you about what I did. Yeah, and, I can't wait to talk about this one guy because it's just crazy to me. Uh the only Coast Guard name that they called out, he didn't show up. <laughs> why would he? <laughs> the guy was like reading the Coast Guard a- is the only military branch where I'm like, oh, you guys do a real thing, actually. Actual virtuous shit. Sometimes, sometimes yeah, you know? sometimes. Like, <laughs> yeah, like they do some actual real shit. So, like, the guy, after like calling out nine names that didn't show up, he's like, is this the right list? <laughs> I was like, that's the only genuine funny moment this whole fucking thing. <laughs> oh, that, ah, that's good. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I was like, good God, this guy just keeps eating the mic. And they started making jokes about Jane Fonda. Oh my God, they did not. I'm like, dude, let it fucking go, that man. so cringe. <laughs> there was a dude that came up wearing his motorcycle vest, you know, because that's, that's formal where my old man was wearing a suit. This guy shows up in this fucking leather cut that yeah, he, he has. And yeah, he had he a, like a yellow sticker that said Jane, not a font, fa- not a fan of Jane Fonda or Excellent. something like that. And I'm like, Man. lying bitch, it said on there. I'm like, you're wearing this in public. You know, she didn't do any of the things no, they said. That's the thing is if they, if they took three seconds to, to look into curious. this, to look into this shit. They, they they get off on the identity of hating her more than anything. And again, for what? <laughs> uh, so really quick, Clifton Manley. Okay. He's very manly. Very manly. Uh, so manly, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, that, that wasn't, I was trying to insult you, we have, we have a chat, so that's what uh, my uh, my dad was captured in Hong Kong in 1941. He would be amused. <laughs> Mom and dad immigrated to... Australia. Australia, thank you. Uh, uh, a, Austria? Stra- Australia. Australia. Yeah. Uh, to escape the endless wars, he blamed the politicians in these flag folders, not the people he fought against. Yep. They didn't want to be there either. Yeah. Uh, it's Nobody like, wants to give up their fucking provincial life and go fight a war? Are you kidding uh, me? The, 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 the people that did the Christmas Day in World War One were like, they, they all, stopped. <laughs> they all, and then they got drunk and they had fun and they played games and like wrote letters to each other. They were, uh, they it's, started sabotaging the war after like the French and Germans started like exchanging like, hey, we're going to be doing this. We're going to aim high. So because like they, we got a big wig coming, so we got to shoot, but we're going to aim high. And like they started coordinating ways to stop not kill killing each other. Each because other. they saw each other's people. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and that happens all the time, actually. They, people have to be coerced into doing this to each other and they have to be coerced i would love to like pick the brain of one of these guys maybe have my dad on one of these days just so i can sit here and be like why did we go to why did we go to vietnam i feel like he would get very upset he would get upset he'd probably stomp out and be mad (laughs) see kyle on the way out you know (laughs) (laughs) i know that's still in there somewhere god damn it you don't dance that close to white nationalism and not fucking keep it you Mm, know you're not good at covering that shit so uh let's see what did i say here i said oh my god this guy has an oath keepers patch on his cut <laughs> mm. i'm like all how right. does that look these days buddy <laughs> i'm right. burning my fucking battery life like doing all these notes while i'm, I'm taking pictures of this shit too my god. i said man my soda's gonna be warm in the car this sucks <laughs> <laughs> I said, my ass is falling asleep and the seat's too low. Like, my knees were up to my chest. <laughs> oh, man. So, th- my size. Yeah. So, I would have fit. You would have been, been fine, but it was like high school dr- theater seating. You know, like the high school auditorium seating. Those were too tall for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a lie. <laughs> All right. So, here's something he said that I tried to quote him word for word. We did it for you. You don't have freedom without us. Mm, talking about veterans we don't have freedom with too you. many people don't honor the flag Flag's young people freedom. today don't know that it's not the breeze that's blowing through the flag when it's flapping in the wind it's wind. but it's the last breath of veterans who fought to protect this country i'm like no it's literally wind <laughs> it's gonna be literally wind and um uh, we'd be free we'd be freer without the state thank you so when my my old man got his thing and i'm like no i don't really want to get pictures of this i don't care. i don't fucking care i'm just here to do this <laughs> being a good kid you know yeah. and he comes back and i see that he's got not just the medal that he got from these people but he also got a pin from that daughters of american revolution thing mm-hmm. and i'm like what does that say he said that he's a vietnam vet and i'm like you never fucking went to vietnam shut the fuck up and he's like well i was in basic training with the very end of it 
And I'm like, you're going to keep that pin. You're going to keep wearing that pin. You're going to keep that certificate they gave you. You didn't do that, dad. He didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you guys are all about fucking stolen valor until someone hands you a pin. You know, <laughs> I was so mad about that shit. Uh, what was it? What was Anwin saying out there? Uh, first Christmas, uh, first Christmas of World War One, French and English troops crossed the line to talk with the Germans and played football. The British literally decimated their, tr their troop involved. One in 10 of the English soldiers were shot for fraternization. Uh -huh. God damn. Literally lined them up and counted one, two, three, et cetera, and tapped the 10th out. Yeah, this shot. is why they made fraterniz fraternization rules. God because damn. if people are allowed to talk to each other, they find out they don't really want to kill each other. No. Each other. They'd really <laughs> rather not do this. Um, can we work out our differences over a, a beer or something? Right. That's how people really like to do it. Um, and it wasn't just the that one spot. It happened the Lots entire yeah. like the entire thing ended up being like having a whole christmas together um yeah it's it uh yeah they had to they had to brutally enforce that to not allow to, to, so that they because like yeah people don't want to people want don't people don't want to do this they don't like doing it and that's why that's why you know that these are not the veterans these are not the veterans who suffered. Yeah. These are the ones who just had cushy jobs, who served for a few years or retired, apparently one. My, uh, my old man, what you know what he did during the Gulf he, War? What did he do? He calibrated the machines that fixed the fucking aircraft and the weaponry that was on them. Wow, wow. He did scientific nerd shit. Does he <laughs> have PTSD from that? That sounds really he, hard. That he does really from some hard. other shit that he had had happened because it wasn't it wasn't just like he wasn't near the fighting or anything like that, but it was still fucking terrifying to be places where like shit got lobbed at you. Oh, you that's know? true. That's, you yeah. know, and yes. being away from home and living, he was by those fucking burn pits that he's like, so he got the fucking go oh, for syndrome shit I'm, going on. That you is know? for real shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. not talking about that. I'm talking, but about no, he didn't have a fucking front echelon fucking, he wasn't Marine Corps. He was, he was chair force. He sat back in a fucking mobile lab and did this shit from work where he was. I see pictures of it and I'm like, doesn't look so bad i'm like he's like i'm like where were you he's like saudi arabia i'm like they weren't fighting <laughs> in this whole thing you guys were in fucking Riyadh. he's like yeah and we used to make hooch in our fucking tents and i'm like you didn't have it so hard dad <laughs> so anyway <laughs> the guy uh um the one dude i wanted to get to this guy goes up in front of the crowd and he he starts talking, making up the story. Not making up. He starts talking about the story about escaped prisoners. You know, not, not escaped, but escaped is what he sounded like. He said that he served in Korea, but he also said that the army doesn't recognize that he did. And I'm like, if the army says you didn't serve in Korea at that time at that place, you didn't. You didn't serve, serve at that time in that place, there, buddy. What do you mean the army doesn't recognize? So he starts telling the story about how these guys break out of prison. Is this and the Great Escape? No, no, this is Korea. <laughs> so, I know, I'm just saying, no, no, just doing like, the Great Escape. So he starts talking about how they set off munitions in the town and it blew up, uh, like, um, he said his words, and please guys forgive me on this one. This isn't going to be like hard slurs. It's just going to be words that I'm like, Jesus Christ, we don't say that anymore. Okay. All the mamasans. All the papa sons and all the baby sons all got blown blowed up, is what he said. And I'm That's like, That's cool. That seems cool and good, man. That seems cool and good and fun. What a fun, fun joke. What a funny fucking <laughs> right. joke. But he also also he did preface this by saying the army didn't recognize what he did, you know, when he was over there doing this. Like I pulled sentry duty and I was like, Jesus Christ, dude, you're telling a bloody war story. And he says, As God is my witness. These prisoners blew themselves up with a grenade when they when the troops started getting there. And I'm like, OK, or you murdered them. <laughs> and so uh, he said, like, yep. And they even made a movie about this. I didn't look up the movie, but I went, there it is. That's where he got this from. You didn't it. serve in Korea. I called it. I called it. I got the movie wrong, but I was like, he's just doing a movie, isn't he? He's just do he's just he's just he's just he saw a movie. He's a guy that. Probably had a boring ass time in the service wherever he was, or if he was in Korea right. and did a rear echelon kind of bullshit, he wasn't where he said he was. Right. And he didn't actually go through any of this stuff, but he's told this story so many times over his life that this is now part of who he is. And he says, it's not me who's wrong and who's lying about this. It's the army right. lying about or this. Or he's selling something. 
fuck this guy. I was so mad. <laughs> so it took them an hour and 45 minutes to finish the list. Ah! Yeah, so this was this was 6.45 when this finally fucking came up. And I said, okay, so they're, they're, he starts, the guy starts praising Biden. And I was thrown for a loop. I'm like, hang on. Hold up. Wait a fucking minute here. What are you doing? And they're like, they're praising Biden because he passed the Gulf War veterans thing with the burn pits and stuff like oh. that. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, cool. But at the same time, aren't you the same guys that are like FJB, you know, yeah. all that other shit? I'm like, whatever, dude. Uh, there was a chubby dude in leather gear with all of his military patches and <laughs> because it was like it was a laced on. It was almost like a corset. <laughs> I was like, this weird. Yeah, we've reached hour, so we're going to wrap this up. He did have a poem that he read to the group, but it read like Dr. Seuss. Excellent. And I was able to transpose a little bit of this. All so right. It says, oh, mama, oh, mama, I don't want to lie. If I don't kill him first, I might die. This is, this is Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, mama, oh, mama, I don't mama. want to lie. It, em it embarrasses me to think that I'd cry. And he just, I don't want this went on for seven minutes. It was a seven minute poem of him reading all this. It's Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm like, dude, shut up. So, and then they started at the very end asking for donations and help. Man. And they had said, we have patches for sale. Put my gun against his head. The pulled my trigger. Now he's dead. This group. It's just it's Bohemian Rhapsody. This Utah, wow, these guys can't help. Utah Cold War Victory Medal or Utah Cold War, whatever the fuck it is. They had a patch that says you can get one for you if you're a uh, if you're someone who served at that time. Mm -hmm. And you can wear that one and your spouses and your family can get the advocate patch that they can wear. Ally. And I'm like. You're not going to tell anybody. You're not a, it's not a recognized patch by the fucking U.S. military. It's not stolen valor at that point. It's the person who goes to Pride wearing an ally shirt. Don't do that, <laughs> by exactly the way. That's exactly what it is. Don't do that, by the way. It's, don't do that. So they, they played retreat on the trumpet, and they did taps on the trumpet, and there was a closing prayer. Of course there was. And the lady that was from the, the, the whatever the fuck it was, Daughters of the Revolution, whatever, D-A-R, mm -hmm. gets up in front of the crowd and starts bearing her testimony like yeah, it's a uh, Mormon course. church. She didn't do the Heavenly Father thing, but it was just like... You, but you've been to enough Mormon churches, you know, was, you know, you know the thing. You know the cadence, you know the... It was tearful and sorrowful yes, enough it that it's like, we pray that you protect our groups that <laughs> are in really the... And I know right that... really now? Yeah. It was... I have it on <laughs> recording. And I might play it for you guys one of these days if I can put it onto a thing because it's just, God, it was terrible. It was the worst fucking two hours I've spent in a long time. And I'm, that sounds truly awful. And I'm like, thank you, Dad, for giving me something I could talk I about on my, my show this week. Like, um, I don't talk to my dad, and I, uh, my mom doesn't go to church, and my grandma doesn't ask me to go to church. So, my grandma's. Well, I mean, my one, she would, she does kind of go. I've gotten a lot of joy out of the Catholic Church, and I'm like, I know, Grandma, love you. Um, and the other one just doesn't and bring it up. Next time you bring something up like this, I'm like, yeah, that's okay. You can keep your jingoistic bullshit to yourself, Dad. Yeah, this is no, I don't. I, care I know this. what I did this last time. I'm not doing this again, <laughs> especially for a group that's not even recognized. You know, it's it's. I, I'm telling you, that's a scam of some it kind. Is, it is. It make your checks payable to mm -hmm. you know the, the Cold War Federation. And, or you could reach out to um, Bright Point Creative, LLC, oh! owned by John Brewer, and it lists all of his information. And I'm like, I might need to look into this guy a little bit more because I wonder what kind of other fucking grifts he's got going on. Because I think you should. I think this you should. smells like a grift. So smells, I smell. I've kept this so I can do more research later. Good. <sighs> but it was fucking terrible. Sounds awful. <laughs> so that was a uh, that was interesting for me, and now you guys have had to live through it too. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never seen so many like just old white people just aggrieved at everything. You know, that's what they it's what they're best at, and how it's like we wouldn't have America without the veterans. And you know what? Also, fuck young people. They're terrible. Yeah, I'm like, hey, wait, I'm a young person in this crowd, and there's a bunch of other young people in this crowd. What the fuck are you they talking about? They love to hate young people. Like, it's like their favorite thing. <laughs> I don't think that's, I don't know if that's universal. I know that, like, there's always a group in of old people who hate young people, because, like, <laughs> like, we, like, there's been a guy on Twitter, I don't remember who, so sorry. He's been doing threads of, like, a brief history of 
men today are too soft and like they go back to like to like the 1850s and they go like back that. to like ancient greece like, <laughs> everybody's generation has been the most manly and the most righteous and- yeah and the most ladylike <laughs> and the most chaste and the most virtuous every single one Fuck, we didn't get to talk about the uh, the lettuce that won over Liz Truss. We didn't get to go into the prime minister. Ah, of- <laughs> uh, Liz. She, she, she got four whole Scaramucci's. 4.4 4 Scaramucci's. I thought so. it was, oh, I thought it was only 40 days. Oh, it was 44. And then oh, yeah, 4.4 of- 4 Scaramucci's. Yeah. And um, uh, Lord Benface has been talking shit on her. I don't, you remember who, uh, do you ever hear of Lord Benface? Mm. He was nor- l- normally uh, known as, um, what was it, uh, Lord Buckethead. You know the 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 guy that, that always familiar. runs in the uh, yes. for prime minister or runs for office in yeah. England, and he's like, "I'm just up here in space, and I like your guys' democracy. It's one of the last ones in the galaxy, and I think it's really funny that you guys vote for people." Like this. <laughs> uh, this is funny, uh, and the lettuce one, and I just can't believe that be- that meme became a fucking thing. It was great, <laughs> so. Uh, that's all about we got for the new. I'm not going to get into news because we, nobody needs no. to hear about Lauren Boebert or Marjorie Taylor Greene. Also, we're at an so hour we're out of time. So, uh, let's see. Before we leave for the week, yeah, <laughs> I want to give you guys a, a little bit of something you could do some homework to go as a way to get to know us a little bit better. You, you know, or just something yeah. you just want to shout out to everybody out there. Yeah, yeah. So, you got anything you want to you want to share? Yes. The okay. Humankind, the book by Rutger Bregman, uh, not Bergman, Bregman, uh. Uh, your autocorrect is going to try to fix it to Bergman. It's Bragman. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, also just look a little bit more into participatory budgeting. It's really cool. Um, I talked about it in the live stream. Um, so I'm just going to shout it out again here real quick. Participatory budgeting. It's, <laughs> it's budgeting, but direct democracy this time. So it's cool. I I don't I've been consuming about the same whole shit that I've have been consuming and doing. So I mean, I don't really have a ton for you guys to share. Oh, how about this? Um there's a show on Hulu that has um god damn it, the guy that played Michael Scott on The Office, the the American Office, uh, Steve Carell. Yes. And I think it's called the it's it's not the therapist. I'll have to look up the name exactly here in a second because I can bring it up. But it's a it's a story about a guy that Steve Carell is a therapist that gets kidnapped by a serial killer to get therapy all the time. Because he doesn't want to kill people anymore. Oh, okay. That sounds like it could be fun. And it's a, it's a really good show, especially because the fact that it dives into the uh, Steve Carell's main character having Jewishness is like the main trait that he has, where he has he is a um, he's not Orthodox, but his son became Orthodox. Oh, interesting. And there's a lot of family tension that happens because of that whole thing because the wife passed away, and he, the therapist is going through therapy in his own mind with his previous like uh, therapist that he that taught him how to do the whole thing. It's wild. And it's a fun, it's an interesting show to watch because it's, you, you wonder what would happen if you were put in that kind of situation where you were chained to a fucking bed and had to talk to your oppressor, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really good show. I'll have to let's see if I can bring up the fucking name. I know I was, I was watching though. The patient is what it's called. The patient. Yeah. So sorry. Spoiler for the first episode. You find out the guy's a serial killer. Oh, okay. I feel like that's not the therapist, but that's how they kind of sold you on the shows. They yeah, right. Knew right? Like I feel like that's probably in the pitch, right? Like yeah, it's basically the first episode inciting incident, and we're come to find out, like yep, he got captured, and now he's having to be therapist full time. All right, good show, really cool. fucking good show. So Steve Carell, love that man. He can act in anything. <laughs> <laughs> Com- comedic roles great, serious roles I like him better. So. That's all I got. So thanks to everybody out there for your support. You can find me at uh, at Utah Outcast. You can find Felicia at Arden Dread. That's two D's at the end. Yep. So find us there. Uh, thanks to everyone for your support. You can always shoot us an email or a text. That's uh, 347-669-3377. Fucking text me. I've had that for years and no one texts me on text, it. Text text him. And or you could leave us an email, mailbag at utahoutcast.com or our respective names. X Felicia Kyle at mm-hmm. Utahoutcast.com. So we're always happy to hear from everyone, but that's it, guys. Three ninety nine is in the can, and uh, you don't have to thank veterans for their their service. You don't. They actually. chose that, except for the people that got drafted. But oh, and fuck the draft, <laughs> man! Don't you, even Rush is pointing that out. Fuck the draft. <laughs> they have a draft. Oh, that's why I was like. I thought you were saying like Russia was like yeah the people saying that got, fuck the draft <laughs> no the people that were getting conscripted yeah running <laughs> for the border good people good, good for, them. for them yeah you don't have to fight for your fucking country just critical support to them 
it. So that's it, folks. We'll talk to you next week. And remember, everyone, you're welcome. Mm. Fun we. Fun. <laughs> Get fucked. That's what yeah. I would say. <laughs> Potatoes. Potatoes. Mm-hmm.